Hi everyone, welcome back to the Navigant Credit Union Broadcast Center. I'm Go Local News Editor Kate Nagel. I'd like to welcome in now my first guest after Ray Rickman gave us Big View, local published author Hannah Goodman. Thank you for joining us today thank in you. the studio. Thank you, thank you. Because we want to talk about the book, Your Route to Publishing, and the many hats you wear. You've been a high school teacher, you've been a college counselor, you are now a licensed mental health counselor. But writing has always been at your core and wanting to publish something. So tell us a little bit about your journey, and we'll talk then a little bit about the book. Sure. Um, my journey is kind of what you just said. Started off as a high school teacher, um, thought I was going to be a guidance counselor. Then I had a kid. Then I thought maybe I'll just tutor a little bit, raise my kid. Then I wrote my first book, and long story short is everything feels like it led me up to this year. Because this year, I was able to start my own private practice in uh, mental health counseling. And I finally got a book deal. Um, so I started off as self-published. And um, now I am regularly published, I guess you could call it. Fantastic. Well, tell us a little bit about the new book, Till It Stops Beating. Give us the kind of soup to nuts process when you said, I really want to write a book about heartbreak. Yes. OK, so soup to nuts, I'll try. <laughs> um, uh, so this book is actually the fourth book in a series. And the first three, I could never get published with anybody. So I published them myself. Um, and then, so what I really did was I had to create this as a standalone. Mm. And uh, when I, the first part of this book was written, uh, 1999. So it was kind of inspired by heartbreak from my own teenage years. And there was a lot of it. Um, but then when I rewrote it, the heartbreak really came from uh, I've worked with young people for so long. So the stories that they were telling me and the struggles, quite honestly, with mental health issues, anxiety, depression, all those things kind of came together. And that's what really that's what really inspired this, I'd say. So you said three books leading up to this. This is the fourth. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about your writing process, because we just said you have many ads, mom, yes. counselor. <laughs> yes. You know, we talk with authors. We'd love to have them in and feature their works. I mean, yeah. what's, what's the process when you go through uh, writing a book? Oh, it's so not fancy. <laughs> um, it's kind of like seat of my pants or seat of whatever. It's um, whenever I can. It used to be that I had this sort of almost religious ritual mm. of going to my local Starbucks. I would bike there very early in the morning before everybody was awake, and I would write. Well, that disappeared uh, probably a good, uh, I don't know, four years ago. And now I write in between everything. Um, I carry my laptop with me everywhere. Um, I Sometimes it's late at night. Sometimes it's early in the morning. Sometimes it's in the middle of between uh, working with clients. Um, I don't have a fancy process anymore. I used to go on retreats. I used to do all those like writerly things. I don't have the time. <laughs> you fill it in when you can. Yes. Publish this. Let's talk a little bit about the book itself and okay. your role as a mental health counselor. Yep. You know, 2018, the world in which these young people are coming up through and mm -hmm. You know, there's something universal about adolescence and yes. teenage years. Yes. But then there's, you know, something, you know, in 2018 with social media and everything yes. else that plays into it mm. as well. I mean, the role of stories and writing something that everyone can kind of relate to. I mean, what's the feedback that you've gotten from folks who are like, oh my gosh, I so remember my yeah. first heartbreak, my biggest heartbreak? Yeah. I've gotten a lot of feedback across generations. And similar to when my 14 years ago when I self published my first book. I think because there's uh, gener there's cross generation of characters. There's the 17 year old main character Maddie, but then there's also her sister who's almost 30, her parents who are like in their late 40s, and then there's her Bubby who's in her 60s. So um, everybody, every all the feedback I've had a high school principal, I've had you know 14 year olds. They all say they can relate. And speaking of social media, there's none in here. I actually intentionally omitted it, omitted a lot of that because I wanted it to feel universal. And since social media is so new, I wanted everybody to connect. So uh, folks of our age. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right, right. right. Like, well, well, thank goodness I wasn't there. Oh, in thank school. goodness. <laughs> thank goodness. Yes. So you've got the published book. I mean, now are you going on a tour and going out and talking sure. with folks? And yes. I love. Okay, we have to take the book away because you have the T-shirt. Oh, I'll move my hair out of it. Yes. <laughs> the same as the book cover. Do you wear it to every book talk? Um, no, this is the first one. This is the debut. <laughs> the debut. Of the the debut. Yes. Yes, it's the debut. So how many places are you going to talk about the book? Um. Well, I have gone to some indie bookstores, but I'm just booked something with Barrington Public Library. Oh, nice. I'm going to be speaking at the Warwick Rotary Club in September. 
September. Excellent. So, but I'm open. So if you want me, you can have me. I would love, love, love to do like a book club. Um, I did that with my first book. It was so much fun. Um, I, I'm really, and I'm my own publicist, so you book through me. Um, yeah, I'm really, I'm in a place now too where I'm not afraid. So um, I, I'm really excited to just keep walking around Rhode Island, because you can do that, <laughs> yes, and can. just to say, here I am, here I am, because I feel like there's so much we can all connect to in this book. So um, yeah, so those are the things I have. And I have like a lot of online stuff. I have a blog tour. They do this now, people. <laughs> a blog tour that's going to start in October. And it's like 21 stops, and I have someone helping me with that. So what's a little bit of a blog tour? Yeah, a blog tour. I don't know yet. Um, no, it's basically the book tour, but you go from book blog to book blog. Oh, interesting. Yeah, and they're okay. all over the world. There's wow. somebody in India. There's somebody in Pakistan. There's somebody in um, Britain. There's like, you know, Massachusetts, whatever. Oh, how cool is that? Yeah, it's very cool. It's, <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. It'll be my first time doing that. So, so that's, and I have a, uh, on my website, I have like all the stuff that, that's coming up and, and um, yeah so but I'm open if you want to book me. <laughs> well all I can say is I'm really excited to read it because here we are you know it's still August there's still beach days yes there's, there's still the beach beach this read seems like just like a beach yes, read yes yes yes, yes. <laughs> plain read uh, yes. sounds like a good read so always the next question is what's next I mean you're so busy publicizing the book right now yes. are you taking a little breather no I don't breathe I don't breathe no I do I breathe for three minutes a day I meditate that's my breathing um, actually there's something called I don't know if you know about this, NaNoWriMo, which is National Write Your Novel Month. And there was something in July called Camp NaNoWriMo. And I participated in that, so I wrote the sequel. During it's very bad right now. It needs editing. But I, that's what I've been doing. That's what I've been working on. When you write a book, and I like to talk with authors about this, sure. that editing process, I mean, how much you oh. say that you went through it in July, but how much is it is nuance and how much of it is like completely substantive like like yeah. oh I don't want this character to do that or is it kind of mm. the bones in place and you're mm -hmm. like well I kind of want to flesh this out more here how, mm. what's your revision process when you write something my revision process is brutal I was a journalism minor in college so my inner editor uh, once once I let her out she's very mean <laughs> um, and very strict so I like to spend a good year playing so I might take a month to write an entire novel but I'll take a year okay. to really play around, flesh out. Then I'll put it away, and it could be a several year process of editing. It dep It really depends. I mean, you talk about having this book started in 99. I know, I know. <laughs> and then I put it away, and then it like, it was actually only, and not to give away too much, spoiler alert, it was only the road trip. So the, the story's told in two parts. It's senior year, and then it's the road trip after senior year. So the original book was just the road trip in 1999, and it was bare bones. Okay. And then when I, a long story, but I did have an agent, and she actually was helpful, um, even though she wasn't helpful in anything else. Sorry, <laughs> she was helpful in me piecing together this book, and and actually it was it was that process where I wrote the what is now the first half, and I stuck it with the second half. So yeah, I mean books are weird the way that authors write books. You know, some books you can write straight in three months, you're done. Other books, you know. Mm. 20 years or whatever. <laughs> I think I'm nearing 20 years. Yeah, this yeah. Book. You yeah. have the next one in the hopper. Yes. So by lieu of that deal with the publisher, yeah. um, is that in the hopper to work with the same publisher? Hi, Black Rose Writing. Um, if you want to buy my second book. <laughs> We're here. And my backlist. Uh, I know they're watching. Um, I ha you know, the publisher's great mm. because it's a small publisher. So there's a lot of wiggle room. If I'm sure, I hope, if I approach them about the sequel, they'd be interested. Um, of course, it's about sales, so buy it, buy it, buy it. But um, yeah, it would be it would be nice to do this again with them because they've really been. It's really been. I, I mean, I can't believe I'm saying this, but not that stressful. I mean, you know, <laughs> other than the own stress I put on myself. Well, it sounds like a fantastic read. Again, yes. these are people of all ages can really mm -hmm. enjoy it, relate to it. Um, Give us a little hint as to what's in store with the next book. You've written it, but you know you must have a vision of where these characters and their life paths go. I do. I, I feel like um, what what I touched on in here was the main character. Quite honestly, she has an anxiety disorder. I mean, she doesn't come out. You know, it's a first person novel. She's not going to be like, my name is Maddie and I have generalized anxiety disorder. But I'm a therapist, so I know she does. So we're going to see more of that. But this is a funny book. 
And quite honestly, anxiety, I hate to minimize anxiety because, you know, whatever, but it can be funny. So there's going to be some more about her own journey mm. with now I'm 18, now I need to go to college, and I also have, like, anxiety, and how am I going to manage that? Um, and also there is a great, beautiful love story that starts here, and it's going to continue uh, in the next book. So the character, you talk about her having anxiety. Mm -hmm. Is there that sort of self-realization there? Does she talk about it sort of herself, oh, yeah. knowing that she has it, how she has to deal with it? She's starting to, in this book, become more and more like, okay, this is clear that I'm going to have to deal with this. Mm -hmm. And so I really want to make it, in the next book, like she's going to almost befriend her anxiety. She's going to struggle and then befriend. And, and the journey of like you're falling in love with somebody and you're going to go off to college and you're really nervous about all this and you have, you know, an anxiety disorder. How do you do all this? And, you know, you, all these hats, you're an author, you're a mental health, a licensed mental health yep. counselor. Yep. So folks who do have anxiety, I mean, mm -hmm. most folks either suffer themselves or know folks who do. Mm -hmm. Is it something that ends up needing to be approached and managed as a little lifelong can you yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, honestly, yes. Yeah, okay. Um, and, if you, and if you do befriend your own anxiety, it, it, it sort of quiets it. I mean, that's just kind of like a quick therapy session right there for everybody. Like you know it. There's the elephant in the room. Yeah. Like, like, don't avoid it. Don't you avoid it. It, it yeah. won't be an elephant. You know, it can be a kitty cat. It can curl up. You can, you know, <laughs> you, 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 can, you can manage anxiety. Anxiety is not like um, a death sentence, even though in the throes of it. It feels you're, like it. It really does. Panic attacks, anxiety attacks. I was having one back in the green room. Um, you know, you, if, you, if you kind of... A lot of people say anxiety is my enemy. No, no, no. It can be our greatest asset. I mean, it's part of the reason why I'm standing here right now, you know, is that I, I, I can use it. I can use that energy. So. so do you think that we've come, and I talk with folks when they come in to talk about mental health, are we getting to a place where it's destigmatized and people are really talking about it? Or do we still have lengths to go to treat it yeah. like cancer and diabetes? We have, we have a lot, a lot to, to do. We have a lot of work to do. And part of uh, me actually becoming a licensed mental health counselor was that my own struggles with anxiety, I mean, that's not a secret. I've talked about it with a lot of people. Um, but I, I was nervous to become a therapist when I was younger because I thought, well, how can a therapist have anxiety? And now I'm like, duh. <laughs> I know. Uh, I, know. <laughs> I know from what I speak of. Um, yeah, we have a long way to go. And I feel like me coming out and saying Maddie's anxiety disorder, quite frankly, was my anxiety disorder in high school. You know, not exactly the same. This is fiction, mom, dad, everybody don't get mad at me. I've had that talk too. Is Do they say, well, am I that character? Yes! I'm like, no, clearly, sister, you are not the sister in here. Um, loosely based on. <laughs> loosely based on. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the character that's probably, the, when my daughter, my 14-year-old read this, she's like, mom. Your main character sounds like you and me. And I'm like, I know, I know. Like slices of me. But yeah, I, 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 to go back to the whole thing about stigma, we have to bust it. We have to bust it. Anxiety and depression are super common. I don't have the stats memorized. But every other person you talk to has probably had a bout with it in some way, shape, or form. So why aren't we looking at it like we do other physical ailments and, and approaching it as such? And you know, talking about you know, high profile deaths, Anthony Bourdain, yes. you know, Kate Spade. Yes. And it happens, you know, we talk with folks when it happens, but it's sort of those downtimes, perhaps. Yes. You know, we all grieve the loss of folks that we know who have yes. lost, but yes. continuing to have the conversation, yeah. keep it out there, and, and, you know, encourage people to talk to someone, yes. whether it's a family member, a professional, right. a friend, right. but to talk. To as soon as, as soon, it's funny, people will come in my office for a session and they'll be like, just saying this out loud is therapeutic and research supports like just saying it to somebody mm. is is half the battle because of the stigma we have you know but so, here yeah. we have this book yes. talking about a young woman's journey loosely loosely based, loosely. <laughs> loosely loosely. based on yeah. Hannah's life but again we'll put links to where you can buy it online sure. if you watch after the fact but we always love to feature local authors in here too and hopefully when the second book the fifth in the series yes the fifth the gets fifth. published you'll come back here to go local live and talk about the next book i will absolutely okay. thank Anna you Goodman, so much thank, thank you so, so much. much don't go anywhere we're going to be right back here in the navigate credit union broadcast center